Hello everyone and happy new year. This is 2023 and it will be the I guess the fifth yeah episode fifth not episode but fifth、uh, tutorial of the series where I talk about different elements and different builds in the game Tale of Immortal. And、uh, so this series will be mostly some in-depth analysis of different elements and builds. And、uh, yeah, so today's element is wood. So wood is kind of different from previous elements in the sense that it is the first or let's say one of the two summon builds in this game. So wood and earth, these two elements are more concentrated on summons, and therefore there are a few differences there compared to other builds. For example, most of builds you want to make yourself have a high damage, right? So therefore you can use fire motion generated fairy flames. However, for a summon build, most of your damage should be coming from your summons, and therefore, even if you make yourself a high damage, doesn't really help that much. Of course, still helps. So, instead, what you should focus on is how to make your summons have higher damage. And to do that, first of all, we need to know what are the how is the summons goes. So here are the woods. Special skills. So in general, there are two types. So for wood, the first type is flower summons. So there are three special skills which can generate a flower, a summon flower, and those are this one, primo energy, this one,、uh, floral spirit, and this one, thorny spirit. And so all of them will create a small flower fairy. So a small flower, and this will、uh, shoot out. Projectiles at summon for you, and if you look at the right side on the top, it shows that yeah, normally the, this small flower take you 12% of your own vitality, 100% of your attack, and 100% of your defense. And this means that you want to have a high attack, defense, and vitality. So your stats still matters because this will be inherited by your summons. And similarly, you the, all the, these two. Should have the same, and another type of woods、uh, is summon、uh, poisons. So in, in the three poison skills, there are only two contribute to summons. One is、uh, poisonous plants, and as you can see on the right side, it again takes 100% of attack and defense, take, but it inherits like 20% of your vitality, so it's a bit more tankier. And finally, here the poison marsh. This skill gives you a chance to gen- to summon a poison frog, which only have 10% vitality, but again, the same attack and defense as you. And finally, there's one skill is entangling thorn, which does not give you any summon. So it is wrong to say that wood is completely a summon build, but most of the time it is a summon one. So now talk about summon builds. What are the things which can make your summon stronger? Of course, you want to have increase your own attack, your own defense, your own vitality, so that you know your summon can have similar,、uh, also high attack defense and also higher HP. Also, so it's probably easier、uh, for summon build in chaos compared to let's say nightmare. It's because in chaos you automatically have this、uh, destiny nature, destiny called divine order. Which basically allows significantly reduced damage to your summoned units from mythical beasts. So without this destiny, your summon will be very, very fragile and cannot survive any hits. As you know, that normally in chaos, your mythical beasts will be one shot, can even one shot yourself. So if your summon have like 10 to 20 percent of your life, obviously you cannot tank the mythical beast attack, but. With this natural destiny, which you all automatically get from chaos, it is a bit more viable. I think they added this maybe at the first or second patch before they released base game, because people are telling the dev that yeah, it's impossible to play summon builds in chaos. Therefore, they added this thing. So now it is possible, and in fact, it is quite powerful. And it's a very completely different experience compared to other playing other builds. So. I do recommend if you are tired of playing, let's say sword, which is most commonly used, you know, builds. You might try to to play wood or earth. And wood, com- it is a more powerful one compared to earth in most of the games. So 
I would recommend you start with a wooden build to try the summon.、Uh, yeah. Now, right. Let's talk about what can increase summon in general. So I will first talk about what are generally good for summon build. Then I will, you know, intro separately introduce flower build and poison build. So generally, for any summon build, one most important mind skill is mastery. And it's, you probably need to have wood mastery instead, for example, sword one, which is quite powerful because it gives you a cooldown reduction of your motion skill. But for summon build, wood mastery is kind of irreplaceable. And the main reason is if you look at ninth and tenth sub skill, so all summon all you need summoned by your allies, which means yourself as well. Deal 70% more damage and receive minus 40% damage. So, just these two sub skills make can both increase your summon's damage and reduce the damage received. Extremely powerful. Therefore, you probably always want a wood mastery, even if you are playing for example earth build. And、uh, also something else which can be useful to. Make a summon stronger. It's actually artifact spirit. And if you have a look at the two videos I posted about wooden builds, you will find out that I start to showcase what are the artifact spirits. This is especially because because these are quite important. So if you are playing summon build, you would like you would need to farm artifact spirit and upgrade their talents so that it, it will help you a lot. So one of the most important one and the most powerful in general is Meng Yi. This is in general is because she has this increase the maximum stacks, but is she is also especially powerful summon build because of this line of talents. Basically, it allows you to, to increase the damage of all the units summoned by allies, basically your summons, increase up to one hundred twenty of twenty percent. I mean for each, and this is based on every how much how many units summoned by you. And therefore, you want to create increase the number of summons as fast as possible. And the more numbers you have, so the more you, the higher damage you have. And the cap is like twenty-four. So basically, but of course, this is the level five talent. And before that, you sixty percent and thirty percent. They are still quite strong. So Meng Yi, this line extremely useful for summon. A second one would be Jiu Chen, and he is also a generally good artifact spirit. Well, mostly because it increases crit rate, but for summons, the most important part is this talent. So it doesn't. So this too, basically, this is upgraded version. It gives you a chance to enchant the summon, which the summon which are enchanted will take less damage, and attack faster, and also have higher crit rate. So this one makes so Jiu Chen is also quite important there, and another one which can be useful, especially for wooden build, is Tang Yang, and that's because of this line. So here it tells it will grants a shield to all your summons if they are not moving. So less than ten agility, basically. This means your flowers and your mushrooms. Unfortunately, doesn't work for your frogs or toads, but for flower and mushroom, this is good. As you know, shield is always good. And so these three are quite useful, especially Bowie and Jiu Chen. Now, what other thing good for summon is probably in late game, which is Leng Jing Tang. And okay, first of all, these two artifact spirits are not designed that nicely. You can sort of see that. Their talent is not even in line, so it doesn't. Each of these on the same line doesn't even have connection to each other. It just again shows that Dev doesn't pay much effort in designing the stage of trio. Where it's probably in too much in the deadline, but that's a different thing. What's it, what's make this guy useful is many this increased duration of your summon units, because most of the summon units have a duration time. For example, flower or like 15 seconds. And this will increase them by five seconds. Also, it will make increase the damage, but it's like five percent. As you can see, nothing compared to Moe. This and also this one, 
basically allows you to you summon the unit to take them to give grand a stack of poison in fact it doesn't say how much the poison damage is but i think it won't be that high so he, the idea behind this artifact spirit is to make your summon stronger but because they didn't design it properly the numbers were not tricked as nicely so you if you have it good if you don't have it don't doesn't matter much and finally there's the interesting thing is this guy unfortunately i actually don't have this guy's talent used but this guy have a really useful thing which is this return to life so basically this guy allows you to summon these two skills it will allow you to summon a wild boar and most importantly if you combine this guy with the artifact the horn of uh, desolation which also summons wild boars and with this skill it will your dead wild boars will be left on the battlefield and it's if you take cast your artifact with charo he can revive all the boars to life so it's not very useful in late game but if you are in early game when you have a horn of desolation you could just use charon with it it will quickly increase the number of your summons which combined with moe's talent will make your summons stronger so that's basically most important part about summons and so basically as i said mastery wood mastery as well as some artifact spirit yeah one thing I didn't mention is the artifact spirit. You don't need to summon the artifact most of the time. Like as long as you combine your spirit with your artifact and equip it in your uh, uh, equip it on you, then when you into the battle, those talents will automatically work. Talents works like that. They are not skills. Skills only work when you summon the artifact. But if it's talents, as long as you are equip them, that's good enough. And right now the next thing is again generally good for summons is this destiny spirit fusion so spirit fusion some say that it's a generally good destiny for all the element of skill which i strongly disagree because if you look at it basically every time you cast a special skill you have 25 percent chance it's not very high to cast it three times if you are level three Otherwise, if you level one, it's one time, level two, two times. And those extra skills only deal 30% damage with the same amount of energy. So it's really not a good deal. However, it's pretty good in few cases, for example, in a water build where you have enough energy. And also, mostly, I say you are not really playing the game, but more like just want to find out the, you know, go for extremes, me maxing and try to find the highest damage and you can you know when you have 25 percent chance when it triggers then it's good you get high damage you probably show good numbers but otherwise in general 25 percent chance is just too low however for a summon case this thing can become good because instead of dealing 30 percent damage these two skills you will get more summons out and those summons will do the same amount of damage so which makes this um Destiny actually quite useful and there are two other destinies which you can only get after after enlightenment so reborn and transcendent one is mirage miasma this allows you to every time when you deal summon unit deal damage basically the enemy will be poisoned and when it's 30 stacks it will do a quite big damage and also increase the damage taken so a very good state for summon build and also this one wing wing basically every time your summon units are attacked you have some chance to deal damage to it and it's not high but quite good and since we are here we are also talking about reborn birds blue birds in general are quite good for summons because as you know you First of all, if you look at its eternal power, it will increase the damage done by summoning units. And also it can re-summon a lot of toads, basically increase the summon number. And it also can recover the life of your summon if you choose the other bonus. 
so quite good in general. Another one which I recommend is I think Jog because I forgot English name again, which allows you give you a chance when it causes laser power, you will reduce your special skill cooldown, so allows you to maximize your summon in a very short time. Which I do recommend for Earth fields, but for Wood, I think Blue Bluebird is better. And what else are there? Yeah, <laughs> as I said, Goshen's Goshen thing is many for mana, because it has this thing that absorb two percent maximum energy every time from sealed enemies from the thief's skill. Basically, makes you full of mana, and I'm just too lazy to use a, a mana peel. And Right, that's basically it. And now we can start talk about the two different builds. So, flower or wood, uh, mushroom, poison. So, for flower, if you look at these three skills, they are actually quite similar. So, if you look at the last few uh, uh, sub skills, basically they are almost the same. Like for uh, starting from the eighth one, you will increase the maximum vitality of your flower when you cast this skill, and also you can consume all the flower spirit. Flower spirit is a buff you can apply to yourself. I think at this point, since this is the fifth time, I, I won't try to explain what the buff debuff is in this game. Basically, they are quite important, and yeah, so. The nice one is basically if you it can cons for every single stack if you consume it will increase more to maximum vitality, and then you can also have basically reduce the damage taken, and when there's only one enemy increase attack range, and also when you have at least three stacks of flower spirit the duration become unlimited. Fun fact: this looks quite powerful and it's indeed in general quite useful. It's so unlimited flower power. Instead of 15 seconds, makes you much easier to maximize the number of your summons to increase their damage. However, in a very special case, this you maybe you don't want this, but that's kind of a exploit, and I will only put it at the end of this video. Anyway, but if you look at the other two skills, all these five uh, sub skills, obviously, I put I edit this skill so that all the five are in the end, so that you can see more clearly. And I don't know if I should explain myself with this, but when I do this kind of uh, explain tutorial videos, I edit the skills because only this, in this way I can do this tutorial. <laughs> Otherwise, how do you think? Like, how long time do you think I need to refresh and grind to get a skill which all the all the special sub skills available so that can I show you stuff, show you people? So I thought this was. No need to explain, but apparently many people are asking me that, well, oh, why do you have all the sub skills? Why are all of them red? I mean, obviously, I edited it. This is for to show you the how the game works, not to play it. I mean, I do have a in general chaos playthrough without any editing or any extra stuff, which you can find in my other playlist. But in these tutorial videos, I need to edit the skills to let you know what are there in this game, right? Anyways, so Flora Spirit have the same last five top skills, similar for Thorny Spirit. And then obviously they have the cooldown and energy cost. And so basically they look very similar, the only difference. So here for Primo Energy, it if you look at what it does, it releases a chi wave to push away the energies and also it make your flower stronger by granting this primo energy effect. You can look on the right side. What I do is increase uh, HP of your flowers and make them attack faster. And since we are here, one more, I just realized I should switch off this before I show you this. And this one should be the first skill you learn. Now, yeah, you see this boom, boom. And that is the wave to push away the enemy. And did that deal damage? And I'm cutting again. 
this will make those uh, so so more flowers deal even faster, deal damage faster. Wow. As you can see, there are much more flowers ahead it's because of Spirit Fusion. And you see those shields on the flowers, and that's because Tal has talent. Because they are not moving, so it's granting them shields. Okay, so this is the first one. Now, the second type, which is this one. Um, okay, this one. Flower Spirit. It's more powerful. So in the end, if for the flower build, this one will be the one which have the highest damage. Because instead of one uh, a chi thing which push people away and deal damage, what it does is immediately make all your flowers to launch three rounds of all around attacks, so 12 flower buzz attacks. And you also have soft skills to increase that, plus 12, so 24. And also it will grant what flower, a flower spirit effect. And again, look at the right side, increase its maximum HP and also plus its projectiles. So basically your flowers will shoot out more projectiles. And unfortunately I think this will make your make your game really uh, laggy. As you can see. So when I cast it, it start to basically generate all the everywhere around projectiles. So if you are cutting it just near the target, it will do even higher damage. Yeah. And I'm putting it nearby and therefore and when I, last time when I put it just on the target, all the projectiles were already attacked by the target, so you can't see it. Again here, three rounds of the attack. And if I cut in here, you can only see half because others were already deal the damage. So you can see also see this purple thing near the flower. If I'm not wrong, this should be the effect which of the flower spirit effect which makes them deal more projectiles. So this one will be the highest damage one if you want to use a flower build. And the last one, special skill. Oh, every time I do this, I do. It's Sword and Spirit. So, I think I showed this one in my showcase video of three different wooden uh, wood builds, which now I think about it, a bit unfair for a flower builds because this one does not really have that high damage. So, what it does is, first of all, it will uh, throw, uh, basically, make the enemy entangled. Entangled is actually a good thing. It's not super useful, like stun, but still a pretty good thing and also it will give the thorny spirit effect you can write basically every time it projectile hits the enemy it will explode so it's not quite powerful as a effect to your summon but I think you mainly use it if you want to use the entangle effect yeah so basically this big area and you can see this target it was entangled so this three things so it cannot move. And when it hits it, you can see this little explosion effect. Boom. And by the way, yeah, it's just by the bio part. I just want to show it and it disappeared. And this time it won't happen again. Ah, here. You see this little green cloud? That is Miasma. The, the destiny, where the last destiny, the effect there. Alright. So these were the three flower skills, and I would say in general they are kind of similar. And this one initially you have, and it's quite good because it will make your... It's more like AoE damage, so in, if you just want to in instant deal damage, you can use this one. Similarly with the Sworn Spirit, and their damage is kind of similar. Well, the... Sword and Spirit also have this entangle effect, uh, but I think this one gives the primal energy will make your flower attack faster. Initially, it will be more useful, but this one, Flower Spirit, will have higher damage. So, if you are using a flower build, I do recommend to use this one. And now, let's look at what are the other ones. So, Poison Plants. 
and Poison Plant have it's a, basically one of the three Poison builds. And this is a typical summon one. And if you look at the sub skills there, so basically you are summoning a Poison Plant, basically it's just a mushroom. So wood is almost like Super Mario. <laughs> it's like you, uh, you have the flowers, you have the mushrooms and stuff. And so those mushrooms will deal damage very slowly. So quite a few seconds to a boom deal some damage and this what it does it's basically if you look at the the last one so first of all upon attacking six times it will split into two more plants so basically if, which means an act increase the duration which means you want to if you increase the duration of the poison plant it will allow them to attack, attack more time and make the number bigger so that's good and also here what the damage comes from is actually from the ninth one. So every time a poison plant hits the enemy, it will denotate one stack of poison sword and deal like 10,000 wood damage in transcendent. If you are in lower realm, the damage is lower, but in general, this is quite high damage compared to the flower itself. And this means that you want to use poison plant with the debuff you apply to the enemy, which is poison is sword. Which itself doesn't do that high damage, but as long as your mushroom trigger it, it will deal much bigger damage. And you can see the poison swords on the right side, one stack is only 500 per second. But once your mushroom trigger it, it's like 10,000 damage. And then you have you know, higher HP as usual. And also, if you have three stack of poison sword, then you will increase duration. And also, if you are casting when there's only one enemy, then enemy will be infected with a stack of points and so on. So, in this case, I will choose this one, a uh, martial skill which applies points and so on. And let's take a look. So, a mushroom one is like this. You are throwing mushrooms. Again, my spirit fusion is triggered, so yeah, there are more mushrooms. But in general, you only throw three mushrooms. And they start to deal damage, like a big AoE. This, you see all this. A red cloud that is the thing doing damage and this one appeared a bit later and you see this one and that's because they have deal six time damage and start to uh, separate into two generate more poison mushrooms and yeah they do quite good damage especially now if I am doing more damage to this and you can see the debuff the point of debuff on the top of this target is increasing and dropping it's because each time the mushroom attack, it will denotate one layer. So, and it will do much bigger damage. If you keep uh, attention with the DPS on the right side, now it's 400k, before it's only 100k. So, this really need to be combined with a point, a debuff, uh, spirit skill to use it. And the disadvantage of this is mainly because you can see that all these mushrooms, they are scattered quite away. Even though they are do AoE damage, but some of them, for example this guy, when it does damage, it probably can't even hit it. That's why it's not even doing any damage. Oh, by the way, now it's a good point to see. You can see the little black smoke around this. That is Jiu Chen's effect to make it stronger. So yeah. So for mushroom, the problem is they're scattered too far away. Some of them, like this guy, you cannot hit the enemy. And now, the next one is Poison's Marsh. So this looks, initially looks like an AoE skill. It will deal uh, AoE damage to the region, but it's actually a summon skill. And that's mainly because the last sub skill here. If there's only one enemy on the ground, it will summon six Poison Frogs. And Frogs can move and they do attack. So this is basically a, a frog summon. And if you have the poison marsh, do not have the sub skill, don't use it. Because the main point of this skill is to summon the frog. And now also, every time a stack of sword was denotated, you have a chance to summon a frog. So if you apply the poison sword, since this skill will also denotate the debuff and the additional damage, 
but also have a chance to stumble a fraud. And then you have standard thing, you move, reduce the speed, and also when a point of frog dies, you will have do more damage, but it's not that useful. The main point is <laughs> uh, do summon a frog. And frog, actually this is the skill which is more powerful. Like, let's say, to enlightenment, because it, it summons really fast. As you can see, immediately I can already summon quite a lot of frogs. And by the way, this is not because of Spirit Fusion. So Spirit Fusion actually doesn't work with this with this skill. So this is just simply without Spirit Fusion. You can very fastly mass the number of frogs and make you some have higher damage. But later on, it becomes sort of less powerful compared to other builds, mainly because Transcendent set effects are more stronger. But let's say Enlightenment or even let's say. Uh, Nothing so, this skill is actually quite useful, quite hard. Also because all the frogs can move, they, they can always attack compared to the mushrooms. Sometimes they are far away, they cannot attack. Yeah, again, if you look at some frogs, they when they are some, they have the black thing near them. That's because they are power, powered by the ocean. And finally, there is... This one, Entangling Thorn, not very powerful, but if you look at it, when you cast this thing, you denotate the debuff and deal more damage. And the dam more damage is higher, and you will have sub skills to make the denotation have more damage. And looks like you can work like you know the finger build. You apply the the debuff and denotate it to keep on let them dealing more damage. Sounds good, but. It doesn't really work that well. But one thing, probably only good thing, it, it can entangle the, the enemy. And entangle does sometimes can stop the, the enemy's moveset. Just like frozen and stunned. At least it can basically to break the enemy's moveset. And you can see that now if I'm doing more attack, and it will just do more damage. But yeah, it's not quite more powerful. And that's the two different type of builds, so flower or poison. And flower mostly are all summons. Poison, two summons, one not summon. And now let's look at the martial skills. So I actually already showed this one, Spiritual Leaf. This will be the recommended one. I, I know sometimes in my videos I use this one flying pedal, but that's just because it lo visually looks better fitted with flower views. But if you're the min max point of view, spiritual leaf is better because it, I mean, I already showcased it before. It shoots out six or even more spirit reliefs so that you can have more projectiles, therefore dealing higher damage and also have better chance to apply buff or debuff. But also I can show you flying pedal. Flying pedal can be better than spirit leaf. And in certain cases, in let's say early and middle game, mainly because it have a longer range and if it does damage, it can along this uh, along this thing. So basically, even if there's an enemy here on my where my mouse is, it can still do the damage even though it's already passed one enemy. And it's long range, so you can attack faster from far away. Instead of spirit leaf, you want to be close so that all the projectiles can hit the enemy. And finally, you have uh, this guy blooming, but again, it's a type where it will only do damage at the location it is, like here. It won't do damage in the middle, so not quite useful in most of the case, I would say, unless I miss something. But yeah. So, very fast about martial spiritual skill. Now motion skill. So, wood motion skill is one type of basically it's a bit similar to let's say a uh, feast, uh, thunder and stuff. Basically, you do uh, you go through a certain distance, and it does damage. It's a bit slow, 
and but what if you look at the sub skills? There are some good sub skills here. It will increase the agility, may decrease the agility of your enemies. Not very useful, but it can restore the HP of your summons. Quite good. But then if you look at the last two, if you have a stack, some stacks of point, the debuff point is thrown, it will summon the frog. So this is another way to summon frog. And finally, if you have six stack of flower spirit, you will summon flower spirit, small flowers. So basically, this allows you to get more summons. And I just realized something that I forgot to talk about. What are the use of uh, flower spirit? Basically, if you have flower spirit buff, it gives you a very small chance to summon a small flower when you are doing simple attack. And that's why you see that I'm not casting, just now I'm not casting any skill, but there are still small flowers appearing. But yeah. And now the ultimate. The ultimate of food is actually quite straightforward. Basically, if you're using a flower build, use Fairy Queen. And if you're using Poison build, use uh, Poisonous Dragon Flower. So, Fairy Queen is... Uh, why don't I just... Show, wait, before I showcase, let me just... Again, see what does it do. So, first of all, it's there are some sub skills: reduce the cooldown, reduce energy cost, increase duration, and Fairy Queen itself will attack with like different uh, projectiles. And the precondition for it to trigger is actually you can see it floats more flower fairies. If the flower fairies die three times, then you can already use it. And Every time when it hits the enemy, there's a small chance to entangle the enemy. But the main point is the last two. Basically, it allows your flower to deal more damage, 25 more damage, and receive 50% less damage. So it's like a mini wood mine skill mastery. Basically, make your flowers more powerful. And similarly, for dragon flower, poison dragon flower, it summon a dragon flower, which again is Super Mario thing. And the main points, so it also deals, have a poisonous marsh, basically deals some poison damage. But the main point is the last one. When this guy is on the field, it allows your frog and plant to deal more damage. And that is why when you are using a poison build, use this out. When you are using flower build, use this out. Oh, by the way, another thing about dragon flower is, again, <laughs> you can cast it when you... When people die from poison damage, it's not that easy to trigger. So you, you probably really want to come back with expertise if you want to use this one. But one thing about this dragon flower is it can directly eat, uh, consume an enemy. It can consume uh, in light. So if you just cast this thing below a light monster, it can directly eat it up. Now. I mean, you probably have already seen it, but just to show what are these two. Flower Fairy King is... Okay, again, Spirit Fusion happened. But basically, you have only one big flower, which deals quite a lot of projectiles. And it also entangles the enemy. And... Four... Ugh. The dragon flower. It looks like this. Typical Super Mario looking. I just realized I almost always trigger Spirit Fusion. But yeah, it will attack the enemy and deal have this poison area below it. Okay. Now, what's next? Um, mind skills, of course. So, as I said, wood mastery is extremely important. Now, what about divine power? So, you have general stuff which increase attack, defense, energy, focus. But if you look at the last three um, sub skills, first of all, it increases the maximum numbers of your small flowers. And also, for each wood, point you have, it will increase maximum vitality, which is quite good. So this will make your flower more tanky. And finally, when there are four enemies, your vitality will be restored, which is kind of useless. Which means not super powerful. If you want, you can replace it with fist. 
and then you have secret menu. So secret menu already has so many sub skills that twelve is not even enough. I have edited, you know, choose twelve or most important ones. Basically, the importance, most important one in the end. So there are something here. It's like first of all, when there are six stack of the debuff, increase all poison damage thirty percent, and also for every stack of poison sword, increase the damage of summon units thirty percent. Looks like quite powerful, but if you are actually using a poison build, you will realize that the poison sword debuff will be denotated all the time. Like you already see, when it either will be denotated by your mushroom itself attack, or you will be denotated by the special skill stuff like Poison's Marsh, which means you actually can't have too many stacks of the debuff on the field. So they are not super powerful. And then you have when you have four flowers, you know, increase, make all your summons recover HP. And also every time when you summon a flower yourself, have summon HP. And then you have standard ones. Basically, each when there's only one enemy, you received buff by yourself every four seconds. When battle starts, you apply the debuff. This is standard for every single element. Yeah. And then you have increase maximum stacks and increase durations, or just a chance to transform between buff and debuff. So basically, that's it. So you can see that secret menu food is also not very powerful. So again, if you really want to, you can use the fire one. But I realize that many people do like to use a pure element build, so it's nothing wrong to use a wood secret menu. Actually, quite powerful as well. And I think that would be this much. Now, what else was there? Yeah, right. Set effect. So wood is quite a strong, let's say, from middle game ish. To enlightenment, it's quite strong. And when you come to the late transcendent, I mean, to transcendent reborn, they are always quite strong. Late transcendent have this two set, and I like this two set effect in thing in the sense that it it makes the two builds like flower build or a mushroom build more powerful. And this it doesn't really make the frog build more powerful, but the frog itself is already quite strong, and it. Strengthening it quite subtly. So for flower builds, you can see the two set effect is that basically when you summon the flower queen, so that's out, it will enchant all the flower ones, randomly ones. And the four set effect is it will flower queen will cast random enhance enhancement every two seconds. So basically, make your flower more powerful. So it's subtle、uh, buff, but it does make it quite stronger. And similarly. When you look at the, the other set, so spilled perfume, which is really weird translation, by the way. Anyway, the two set effect is, makes a mushroom do two additional attacks. First of all, this one makes them more easier to in, to generate a new mushroom. If you remember, mushroom does have this thing that for every six times they attack, it will split into two mushrooms. All right, this is already quite good, and also. It will also deal one stack of feeble, which will increase the damage of your mushrooms. Quite good because it up to 125 percent. And also, the four set effect basically allows you to do more poison damage. So basically, all the poison swarm basically is your debuff damage. It's not much, but this will be recorded, and when you you do your out, then. It will redeal this damage. I would say I really don't know how much this strengthens it, but you know it's better than nothing, I guess. But I feel this recording damage thing maybe will make this build quite laggy. But I cannot say because the most laggy thing is still this provide the random enhancement. Because if the enhancement is like this guy, you know, flower spirit, make them. To do more attack, this makes the whole screen complete st- complete lag. Stuck is because you have too many units and they will do too many enchantment. So that's the problem of the side effect, but it doesn't make it stronger. So that is for sure. And something else about yes, something else about the sub the summon build. You want 
uh, in your guide, you probably want this thing for the last. Mm, where is it? Yeah, the ninth one. Every time an ally dies, your energy will be restored. So, I think there's also another sub skill. When there are how many allies on the on the ground, you will restore energy. So, if you do not have a Goshen, so like initially, this will be the, your main way to restore energy. And similarly, in the Sutra, you should have something like for every ally on the battlefield, you will vitality be restored, and every time an ally dies, you will restore your HP. So basically, allows you to make it stronger. And finally, it's a small glitch, or which you can exploit in this version, in this patch, is a subskill in your move. So if you look at the last move, subskill here, every time an ally dies, your damage will be increased by 2% for 10 seconds. And note that unlike the other one, the, ninth, the 11th one, for every 100 times you deal damage, your damage will increase by 2%, up to 16%. This one does not have an up to, does not have upper limit. And this 10 second time, as long as you are another ally dies within the 10 seconds, your damage will be increased more. And this can stack to 100, 600, 500, 1000 times. Therefore, if you are using, let's say, a mushroom build, when your mushrooms start to die one by one, because their duration is reached, your own damage will be increased more and more. And therefore, it might be min max, most min max way in this version is get a fire secret menu, a fist divine power, cast your mushrooms, wait for like one minute so that you get, they start to die and in numbers and your stats start to stack this buff and you become very high damage because your damage will be increased a lot. But first of all, it's exploit. So I do not really I think it will be fixed in some time. And also that's the reason why I say that maybe this subskill of the flower one that so that the flower will be unlimited time. Maybe not a good thing. And that's bec again because of this subskill. I think that would be everything, if I'm not wrong, because I've showed martial skills, special skill, motion skill, mind skills, ultimate set effects. I did show this one as well. I mean, one thing, yeah, for some abuse, murder rights is not even used, needed. Um, less the case where you are using that one sub skill in the move. Your own damage is not much because all your summons have the same damage as you. So your summon damage is more important. And I mean, you should always want combat expertise, which is always good, and blood power. And finally, I think I even talked about the first big word. So yeah, I think that would be it about the wood build. So thank you for watching. And I might take some time to just make some episode just talking about artifact and artifact spirit. But I will see. So, all right. So again, thank you for listening. And if you find this guide helpful, please consider to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.